Well, good morning. Um, I am not in the church. I uh, was planning on it, but this morning when you get up to about uh, close to four feet of snow, <laughs> it's a, bellying through it to get over to the church uh, didn't seem like a really good idea. So uh, we're sitting in my uh, in the study and um, back here and doing uh, doing our devotions for the day. Um, I uh, left my book over there, so I was praying about, you know, uh, what it would be that God would be interested in uh, having me share. And this, uh, the verse I'm going to use came to mind immediately. And uh, I think it really is a tremendous thing to first focus on in this week when we're thinking about God is with us. So will you join with me in prayer? Lord, as we come before you this day, we ask your blessing upon us. Bless us with a sense of your presence at work in us in this day. Grace us with your presence in such a way that we can see it clearly. We know that you are with us, whether we are cognizant of it or not, in any given point in time. But, Lord, we ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit and feel that incredible presence, that indwelling presence, which you have promised. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the scripture I, I want to uh, read for you today is just a very short one verse, the 23rd verse of the first chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. And in point of fact, I read this not too long ago. Um, this is following the uh, announcement to Joseph that he should not be afraid to take Mary as his wife, that in fact God is in the midst of this, and he is to marry her, and, uh, and Joseph agrees. So the angel is there, and he's speaking to Joseph, and uh, he has told him these things, <clears throat> and then Matthew adds a little editorial comment, and he says, uh, and I'll start with verse 22, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Such a short little passage, and yet it has so much important words for us. It, it strikes at our very hearts. It reminds us of what God's desire is, and that is to be with us, to be working in us and through us, to include us in the kingdom, to have us as servants, but even more importantly, as children of the king. Uh, we have a purpose here, and that purpose is to be in communion, in connection uh, with God. That's God's desire. So when Matthew refers back to the Old Testament and the prophecies relative to the Messiah, we see him pull up this one at this point, pointing out to the reader that this prophecy, this word of God for the people of God has been fulfilled in the person and in the birth and life of Jesus Christ. And so we have this, this sense of God is, God is with us in the concept, the whole concept of the Messiah. So Jesus comes, and in, in that time frame, of course, God is with us. You know, God himself was present in that moment when Christ was born. Actually, when he was conceived, to be perfectly honest. I mean, let's face it. So God is present in the world in Jesus Christ. And then when Jesus ascends, there is a pause there is a short pause, and uh, very shortly thereafter, 
God returns in a very tangible way in the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit's been around forever, but never has the Holy Spirit been active in the way that the Holy Spirit has been active since Pentecost. In terms of engaging Christians internally and directing them, you know, for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. This is, this is God's will. This is God's desire. This is how much God loves you. There's very few things that really get, get it said as well as, as this passage. Once Jesus has come, God is with us. And, uh, and his presence is, is the proof. And, and the work of the Holy Spirit within us is the proof. And you had that one little gap you know, between the ascension of Jesus and the uh, and the coming of the Holy Spirit. And it is a time of waiting. It is a time of anticipation. It is a time of excitement, a time of preparation, a time of getting ready for the final quarter. It is God making sure that his people were alert and eager. You know, I think a lot of times we do things in our own lives. We, uh, we build excitement for something so that it is received with as much excitement, perhaps as we feel in giving it or providing it or doing it. Um, we have that little, little gap there. Now, in your life and in my life, the presence of God in the world has been from long before we were born and will be present in the world, God with us, long after we uh, die physically and, uh, and will eternally be there with us. So, uh, such that, you know, we have the promise uh, in Scripture to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord, so that even in the physical death that we may experience if Jesus tarries, uh, there is that sense of absolute eternity. We, in, in dying in the body, our souls are immediately with the Lord. Why? Because of Emmanuel, God with us. We are never to be separated. Once we receive God in our uh, in our lives in our hearts once we accept the name Christian and attempt to live in that we enter into an eternal state where God is with us never leaving us no matter what we have to go through no matter how hard those things are because we still live in this world and, and we get so hung up in the things of this world, that's, that's a problem for us. But the reality is we are not of this world. We belong elsewhere. We belong specifically with Christ. And, uh, and so we have the witness of that and the Holy Spirit working within us, and we have the, uh, the reality of that for all eternity being in the presence of God in a very real and profound way. That's why, you know, Christmas is such a great and wonderful time of year. It's a reminder to us of really the last time that people were completely on their own. And it's a reminder that the new day has dawned. We're in God is with us. We don't have to be on our own. We don't have to face anything by ourselves. God is with us. 
And, and so then the question, I think, really becomes, are we with God? And there are times, and we've I've talked about this this week a, a number of times previous to this, there are times when we feel very lonely. We feel like we're out there, and, uh, and we don't necessarily feel the presence of God the way we would like to, the way that we would expect to, the way that... Um, would would help us to feel a lot better. But folks, that's where faith comes in because in sending Jesus, in calling him prophetically Emmanuel, God with us, God gives us that eternal, permanent, consistent, constant promise that indeed he is with us. So even if we don't feel it, we know that it's true. I'll tell you a little story. <clears throat> when I was a kid, and I may have used this story before, if I have, and you're going, Jamie, we've heard this before. Bear with me, and and uh, you know, eventually my stories will become yours, and you'll be able to share them anywhere, anytime. Okay. But uh, I was a I was a kid. I don't remember how old I was. Probably I'm guessing nine or ten, maybe somewhere in that neck of the woods. And uh, my dad taught music uh, at Letchworth Central School. And in the summertime, he often would uh, for years he painted houses. And uh, then uh, one summer he started working at the gas company in Fillmore, and. Um, so when he would come home, whether he'd been painting houses or whether he was working at the gas company, he usually was kind of sweaty and, you know, and, uh, and so sometimes on, on a particularly warm night, we would all pile into the station wagon and we'd roll up over the hill and we'd go to Rushford Lake. And there was an area there that you could swim and, and we'd get there and my dad would wade out and, uh, into the water until he was probably about you know, about this deep, <laughs> just stand there and, and let the heat and the sweat and the swelter and probably little bits of paint and, you know, whatever, just wash away in the coolness of the water. And uh, one time he was out there like that, standing and talking to another guy that he knew that was, that they were there, you know, to swim to, or to get, at least get in the lake. And I would, uh, I, I went out because uh, I kind of wanted to be there and, you know, be, and I, I love my dad and I wanted to hang around with him. So I'm, I'm bouncing my way out there and all of a sudden I, I dropped into a hole <clears throat> and I wasn't swimming. I was just kind of walking out. I dropped into a hole and, uh, and went under and came back up and I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. I didn't know what I was going to do. And so I think, I think I may have said help or something like that. And my dad looked at me and he laughed and he said, swim. Now I've been taking swimming lessons from, for years. <laughs> I, knew, I knew how to swim. And, uh, and so it was like, oh yeah. So I started swimming and, uh, and, and I was fine. And actually I, I could, uh, if I stood on my tippy toes, I wasn't over my head. You know, I could, uh, the water was right about here and, uh, you know, I could stand there. But in that moment of terror, you know, when you dropped into that, just a depression in the bottom of the lake, I dropped into that and suddenly I was desperate for help. Now, when I was desperate for help, I had two choices, right? Or my dad had two choices. He could have reached out and grabbed me. And, uh, and, you know, pulled me out. Instead, uh, what he did was he told me to swim. Because he knew that I knew how to swim. And, and he sort of chuckled and, and it forgave, that, that chuckle was a forgiveness to me for being so stupid as to forget to swim. You know, it's like, it's okay, just swim. You're good. And, uh, and, and so I did. Now, when I said help, 
uh, I think, you know, I wanted my dad just to reach out and grab me. That's what I wanted from my father right in that moment. But he gave me something that was far better, which is you have worked and you have learned these things, put them to use. I think oftentimes uh, God is a lot like that in that we face difficult, difficult things in our lives. And, and God says, what you have learned to this point is sufficient to get you through this. And the biggest thing that we have learned is faith. Faith that indeed God is with us. And, and so, you know, it's, it may not be the answer that we want that we get from God, but if we, are, if we really are seeking an answer, if we're really seeking help, um, God works in all sorts of avenues of our lives. And, uh, and sometimes he reaches out and grabs us, because sometimes we really are over our heads. And other times God says, now, you know how to deal with this. I have taught you how to deal with this. You have found me dependable, depend on me, having taught you. So it's kind of a, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, so just because we don't feel like God is there speaking to us, just because we don't necessarily feel like God is giving us all this direction that sometimes we would really like to have, um, you know, doesn't mean God's not there. God is with us. From the moment that Jesus came until he ascended, Emmanuel. And then there was that one little gap where Jesus wasn't there and the Holy Spirit had not yet come, and yet that also was Emmanuel. Why? Because the disciples had been with Jesus. And not just the 11 who were left, but a, a whole group of people who believed in Christ. I mean, you know, again, uh, what happens at Pentecost? Well, there's a couple hundred people together. So, you know, there were a whole lot of people who followed Jesus consistently in, in his ministry and in his life, and they were still there. The 11 disciples who were left, of course, excluding Judas Iscariot, um, the 11 disciples who were left were leaders, and Peter was kind of the head of that. And so, uh, in that time, you know, Jesus wasn't there, the Holy Spirit had not yet come, and yet still... Emmanuel, you know, God is with us. God was with them. I, I suspect there was a lot of protection that was going on. Uh, I suspect that God was there in multiple ways. And then it wasn't a very long time between those two things. And then God arrived in a very tangible way and entered into every single one of the believers who were gathered together that day. I say it was tangible. It was, it was definitely tangible. They're speaking in languages they didn't even know. Okay, something changed. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they were able to do things that they, on their very own, could never have done. And, uh, and I think it's important for us as Christians to remember that. That, that, hallmark moment when um you know when the holy spirit comes upon them and never ever ever again is there even the remotest sense or should have been the remotest sense that any of us who call ourselves by the name christian are out there all by ourselves god is with us emmanuel is a reality and uh, so again it doesn't mean that you know like God is riding shotgun or you know uh, Jesus has got the wheel trust me <laughs> you know but he is there at all times anyway that's the uh, that's one of the thoughts that has been um, very prevalent for me, you know, as we, uh, as we go through these difficult days, and they are difficult days, make no mistake about it. God understands. He knows. He gets it completely. 
But there are days that we do not go through alone because Emmanuel. Will you pray with me? Lord, as we go through these times and these days, we are so thankful to know that we do not confront them alone that you are with us, you are one with us. The Holy Spirit is in us and acting and active and constantly, constantly expressing your realities into our lives. Help us to pay attention to that, Lord. Help us not to get so lost in our loneliness or our fears that we would forget for a moment, Emmanuel, God is with us us. We give you thanks and praise for that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, have a great day. I suspect most of us in the area where I'm at are, are uh, having a snow day. Um, I don't, I can't imagine the roads are open. Uh, I can't see the road from here anyway, so I don't know why I'm trying to look. <laughs> but when, when, uh, we got uh, rolling and started really looking out the windows. There was one <laughs> path plowed down the middle of the road, and I haven't heard anything come by since then. So uh, it, it's it, it's pretty thin, uh, the chance that anybody's anywhere else. So God bless you. Have a great day. Stay safe, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.